In this online lecture, we're going to talk about a very useful tool in confirmational analysis, and that is the energy versus bond rotation graph. So let me show you how this works and why it's so beneficial. Let's use a simple molecule. Let's look at ethane right here. And let's generate a Newman projection for him. Let's call this carbon right here carbon 1. He'll be our front carbon. And we'll put this carbon right here too in the back of our Newman projection. So notice both carbons have three hydrogens on them. So this would be our staggered Newman projection so far. Now let's overlay on top of this here the energy versus bond rotation graph. And basically on the y-axis is energy and on the x-axis is bond rotation. And what we're going to do here is start on the zero point of the x-axis with this Newman projection that we have here. If we were to graph this structure, he would be roughly, let's say, right here, meaning that the energy for this Newman projection would be very low for two reasons. Remember, one, it's not an eclipsing structure. It's staggered. And two, there are no gauche interactions. Remember, the term gauche is only applied to when there's two non-hydrogens that are 60 degrees apart. You could technically say that this molecule has gauche interactions between two hydrogens, but the thing is, is that's not worth a lot of energy. Remember, the hydrogens are very small, so there's not really any steric strain here when two hydrogens happen to be quote-unquote gauche to each other. So this will be the point on the graph for our first structure. Now imagine this. Imagine you start to rotate the bond between carbon 1 and 2 of our molecule. And let's use a reference here. I'm going to use this hydrogen right here in the red circle. Let's rotate the bond from our point of view clockwise, which means this hydrogen, we'd move him to over here. And if we moved it that far, that would bring us to the next confirmation, which would happen to be, in this case, the eclipse confirmation. Now, where should he be on this graph in terms of energy compared to the first Newman projection? Well, remember, he's an eclipse structure. Eclipse are always higher energy than staggered. So wherever he is on the graph would be much higher than the first structure. Now, here's what's great about this particular method in confirmational analysis you could connect the dots between these two points on the graph. And what you would be doing, basically, is representing the energy level of all the conformations between these two structures. Notice, as we start to rotate the bond, the energy of the molecule increases because it's adopting a higher energy eclipse conformation. And you could technically say what we're looking at in front of us are two extremes. But let's continue this analysis, and then we'll take a step back and really look at what this graph helps us understand. So let's continue rotating our bond here. Let's go back. When we left off, here's the hydrogen. Let's rotate him to the next extreme, which in this case would be another staggered structure. So that would look like this right here, and now our hydrogen is at the bottom. Where should he be on the graph? Well, think about it he would have the same energy level as the first structure. Because notice, all the interactions are identical here. So he would be this level on the graph, even, again, with the energy level of the first structure. And let's connect the dots. These would be the energy levels of all the structures in between these two. And we could even keep going. Let's take this bottom hydrogen here. Let's rotate him to the next extreme. That would be this right here. Notice we're back to another eclipse structure, which is identical to the second Newman projection, so he should have the same energy level as him. And again, connecting the dots, our graph goes back up like this. Let's do one more rotation here. Let's say if we move the hydrogen here, now we're at another staggered, and again, it would have the same energy level as all the others, so it would be this point right here on the graph. And again, connecting the dots, we would be down to here, like this. Now notice, we wouldn't keep doing this. We kind of get the trend. Basically, our energy versus bond rotation for ethane is a sine graph. And we're noticing that all the eclipse conformations are the same energy level, and all the staggered conformations are equal in energy. What these graphs do is give us a better picture of all of the conformations of a molecule not just the extremes of staggered and eclipse. 
And here's something I'd like to point out. This will always be the case. When you're doing confirmational analysis and you're looking at an energy versus bond rotation graph, please note that the highest points of the graphs here are always going to be due to an eclipse structure. And the troughs of the graph here are always going to be due to a staggered structure. Remember, it goes back to that principle that eclipse confirmations are always higher energy than staggered. So we can see that these graphs are beneficial, but what's a typical problem in organic chemistry concerning this? Well, let's look at one here. This question says, which one of the following is the energy versus bond rotation graph for 2-methylbutane about the C2 and C3? If you look closely here, this graph number one is definitely different from graph number two, let's say. Graph two looks like our sine graph for ethane, where graph one is not sine. And that's also true for graph three. It has various heights and various troughs. I'll show you in a minute how I'm going to use this to my advantage. So let me show you the steps to go through to answer this question. There's many ways to do this, but this way I recommend. First, of course, we're going to start out with our rough sketch of the molecule and we're going to make sure carbon 2 is in the front of our Newman and carbon 3 is in the back. We talked about this skill in a previous online lecture. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with any structure. You can start with anyone you want, but I'm going to start with the eclipse version of this molecule. Notice I have everything placed correctly. And what I'm going to do is call this eclipse structure 1. And then I'm going to do a quick little energy analysis here. Let's see what types of eclipsions we have. Notice at the top we have a methyl eclipsing with a hydrogen. Over here we have a methyl eclipsing with a hydrogen as well. And we also have a methyl eclipsing with a hydrogen. So in terms of energy level, we would say that this molecule has three methyl hydrogen eclipsing interactions. That would correspond to a certain amount of energy. Now, let's do an analysis on another eclipse structure of this molecule. We also talked about how to quickly do this in another online lecture, and that is, remember, simply move the methyl to the next location. In this case, I'm going to move my methyl so that it eclipses with this hydrogen in the back over here and take a look at the resulting structure. This is what we would have. Now, let's do our same energy analysis here. Let's call this eclipse structure number two. Let's see if he's energetically different from eclipse structure one. Well, notice the first eclipsion we have right here is a methyl hydrogen eclipsion. So let's list that. We got one of these. Over here, we have a hydrogen hydrogen eclipsion. So let's list that, an HH eclipsing. And lastly, look at this right here. We have two methyls eclipsing. Let's list that. Notice in our confirmational analysis here, we see that Eclipse structure number two should definitely be higher energy than eclipse structure number one, simply because that methyl-methyl eclipsing would have a lot of steric strain and therefore be very high energy. And in fact, let's keep track of our progress so far. Just looking at these two structures, we already have an idea of what our graph would look like. For instance, let's say if the energy of eclipsion one structure was right here, then on the graph, E2 should be higher than him over here. But just to be safe, we should get one more eclipse structure to be sure we know the trend of our graph. And remember, we saw in a previous online lecture that there's always three eclipse structures and three staggered structures. For this problem, this is why that was so important to know, so that we know when we generate the third eclipsion, we've considered all of the eclipse structures here. So to generate that last one, we're going to take this methyl right here and simply rotate him to the top. That's going to give us this structure right here. And again, let's do an energy analysis on him. So let's label him E3 and let's see what we have here. We got a methyl hydrogen eclipsed. Let's list that. We got a hydrogen hydrogen eclipsing. Let's list that. And lastly, we got a methyl methyl eclipsion. So here that is, right here. Notice in our energy analysis that we have the same eclipsing interactions that we got with eclipsion structure number two. That means energetically E2 and E3 should be the same. So placing him on the graph, he should be level 
with E2. What I'm trying to show you here is this is enough information now to get to our answer and let me prove that to you. Let's go back to our possible answer choices here. Let's put up what we got in our analysis so far. Remember we saw that eclipses are always the high points of the graphs and our graph shows that we would have three high points, two the same, one not the same in height. Notice this rules out graph number two because graph number two clearly has all the eclipse structures equal in energy. So let's get rid of him. Now careful here, it seems that graph number three could be our answer. Let's try to fit him. Let's call this E1 because notice it's a lower energy eclipse structure than the other hump next to him. That would mean this could possibly be E2 and so far it looks like things are matching up. But remember according to our analysis the next high point of the graph should be the same as E2 and look what we have here. It drops down and ends up being equal with E1. That's not our trend so we need to get rid of this graph. Now just to be safe, let's investigate the first graph. Notice if we started right here, he's the lower energy eclipsion, so we should call him E1. Then this could possibly be the higher energy E2. And if we rotate one more time, notice we do get an equal energy E3. And not only that, remember we know these are the three eclipse structures. So if we rotated one more time, we should be back to E1 and notice the high point of the graph goes back to being level with E1. So this has to be our answer. So here's my point. These graphs help us understand the energy level of all the conformations of a molecule. But however, in terms of problem solving in organic chemistry, all you need to do is pick either three eclipse structures or three staggered structures. And you can piece together enough of what the graph would look like to at least rule out answers and land on a correct answer. Again, this is also considered problem solving in organic chemistry. And analogous to algebra here, we're going through a series of steps to solve for x. So this is another thing I'd like you to practice before your next orgo exam. And there are plenty of these in your orgo textbook.